room here, it's just a, you know, the chills off the air, it's just, it's just lovely. So, um, you know, I see there's some... Okay, let me just talk a little bit about um, this. Uh, I've been using for quite some time, let me just zoom down and I'll show you, um, an RTL SDR dongle for, for test purposes here in the shack. And while it's been fantastic for, for, for VHF and that, it has been a bit sort of lacklustre when it came to um, HF. Um, this is unfortunately upside down, so I apologise for that. Um, it's a version 3. Uh, which allows the direct sampling of the quadrature channel um, to do HF detection. Um, and ordinarily I'd had this plugged directly into the computer and I was having a lot of interference, a lot of uh, intermodulation and, and really well, while it was okay it was certainly not that flash. So what I've just done more recently is just decided to do a couple of things which I've seen mentioned around. The first thing was to have it separated from the computer uh, by using a USB extension cable and I certainly found this to be true um, some suggestions were to break the outer braid so this this configuration has actually got four different things going on um, or arguably five actually uh, first thing is it's it's been separated from the computer with the USB cable the USB cable I've got here has got an RFI suppressor ring uh, already pre-attached to it as part of the the, uh, the cable itself. Um, two, I, I read online and I certainly found it to be beneficial was to um, essentially cut the shield between the well, between the two ends. So you can imagine that the two ends of that cable I've now severed that shield as close as I possibly could to the RTL end. Um, the reason why the red wire there is, is is a little bit shorter as I initially had I was playing around with a 100 microfarad capacitor no not capacitor sorry 100 uh, micro henry inductor in there to uh, try and cut down even more any RF potentially getting to uh, the RTL uh, SDR dongle there but uh, that actually caused more interference it's been soldered back but anyway suffice to say cutting that shield I found personally to be uh, another good step in reducing uh, noise products and other things that I didn't particularly want uh, on the display. Um, so that's one, two, uh, three, four and five. Um, I was initially going to uh, make these myself but I found these on a local site here which were pretty cheap so I thought eh, I'll just go ahead and, and buy the commercial ones and see how they perform and honestly they, they work really really well. So the first one here is a 2.6 megahertz high pass filter so in other words, that's designed to uh, get rid of the broadcast band, so those high power AM radio stations. So that's got a 3 dB, so again, a minus 3 dB cutoff of 2.6 megahertz. And the second one held directly in series is a um, is a FM broadcast band um, filter. So it's, it's filtering out those high power FM radio stations. And as a consequence. A beautifully clean. Um, now today is a bit of a noisy here with with QRM and the like, but it certainly has cleaned up significantly. The cleaned up the the um, the noise on on the RTL dongle, and it's and it's made it really good. So. Um, what I because my, my aim was not necessarily to use it as a radio but to use it as it's right now muted but just giving an indication of what's going on on the band in order to support um, other operations in the shack. In other words, uh, because these radios down here don't have uh, a, a pan adapter at the stage, um, I thought this would be sort of a, a nice, sort of simple way of getting that in the shack. Um, the other thing which is really nice, it's sort of, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a, a here nor there, is the mouse I use here is a, uh, a Logitech Marathon mouse. And what I really like about this mouse is I can engage and disengage the, the, uh, the ratchet on the scroll wheel. So at the moment I've disengaged it and this scroll wheel here will spin. It's still spinning, still spinning, still spinning, slowly, slowly coming down. It's still going flat out. And it will go forever just about. Um, and what it allows me to do is on the screen is I can give it a flick 
and I'm now spinning down here. Stop. So I've just sh sh shoved my finger on the on the uh, the wheel and I've stopped it. So that's 3.5 megs. Oh, there's something up here. Give it a flick. Stop. And now I'm back up at 3.75. So it's a really fast way of zipping around the place um, on this particular display here. And I, I default it to one kilohertz uh, stepping range for the simple reason is 99.99% of people out there um, their VFOs on their radios uh, are set up to be one kilohertz increments. So I can basically just set myself down here and it'll probably be spot on. Yeah, so nice and easy. Anyway, so I just wanted to um, pass on. Um, excuse the old creaky, um, creaky bit there. That you know these two filters here, fantastic. Um, cutting the shield seemed to work really well. Having the um, the dongle separated from the computer, not by much, but um, by some, using the cable was really good. And uh, I'd argue um, that RFI suppressor there uh, was another good thing. And without sort of uh, belaboring the point, uh, it's turned that, that dongle into um, a really good tool for me here in the shack. Right, okay, so what I wanted to talk today about um, solely was, uh, not solely, but mainly was around what I'd like to do uh, moving forward. Um, so I've got a few business trips coming up, so in and around those, I wanted to um, have some projects to work on uh, back at home. So, two things that I really want to do. Um, uh, number one is I want to, I do want to um, get back into software-defined radio. So I do want to um, reinvigorate, not reinvigorate, but to, to go back over and to redo, essentially from the ground up, uh, an SDR radio using the, uh, the Teensy 3.5. Um, at some point in time, I would like to do an SDR radio where I'm directly sampling the RF coming in, uh, digitizing it right there and then, and then doing something with it. But um, for now, what I want to do is to continue using the TMC 3.5, having some kind of front end which is presenting the, uh, the audio shield uh, with audio in quadrature, uh, and then applying the, the additional digital signal processing on that or well, those two signals, the in-phase and the, uh, so again, the, um, the quadrature and the in-phase signals to then produce uh, the upper side band, lower side band, um, CW, uh, AM and whatever we want. Um, so that is, that is the approach I will be taking. Um, now in terms of the front end, in the past I, uh, I have been playing around with the likes of SBL1s uh, and ADE-1s. Uh, one of the versions I had at one stage was using um, uh, was using the, the NE612s uh, and while they're all good um, for this particular one I want to try uh, an approach which is, is very common um, and that's using a, a multiplexer uh, to multiplex the incoming RF to produce uh, um, the audio frequency on the output. Um, I've got a choice of using the 74HC4052 or the FST3253 um, the advantage of using the FST3253 uh, is it's around 1 ohm, um, 1 ohm of resistance between the input and output versus 100 odd ohms for the 4052. So, uh, and, and cost and availability here in New Zealand, they're essentially exactly the same. So, um, I had to buy a packet of 10, I think. So, I've got 10 of those 3253s on their way for a princely sum of ten dollars I think, so a dollar a piece. So when they turn up um, I'll, I'll build the front end and the approach will be to confirm the performance of that front end using um, RTO, using say SDR Sharp, so using commercial product um, and then once that's been proven I'll then uh, feed that into the homebrew back end. Uh, nothing new and novel there, it's been done before but um, as I like to do, I like to do it my way and, and, and basically sort of learn. So that would be the approach. Um, front end first, confirmed with commercial software, and then front end into uh, the homebrew software back end. Um, that would be the approach. Um, I'll also incorporate into that the, um, the pan adapter, so probably a waterfall if I can. Um, I don't have the, the programming smarts to, to, to draw that um, waterfall directly into the memory of the display so I'll be uh, I'll have to use uh, 
uh, the approach I was taking when I was playing around with the homebrew pen adapter uh, a month or two ago, uh, just plotting out line by line of a of a, a 2D matrix. So we'll see what happens there. Um, but that's what I'd like to do. Um, so probably enough said on that one. So that's that's one of the things I want to do. The other thing I want to do is to is to build um, a whisper transmitter. Um, I've got a few things floating around the shack here, which are sort of uh, sculptures and, and digital clocks that you know use GPS and then and then plot a clock face and hands and it's sort of just little little things like that around the shack. So what I wouldn't mind is actually having a uh, a whisper transmitter just sitting there. Uh, so when I come in the, in the shack, I can flick the switch on, it bursts into life. Um, it has a uh, a GPS. So I've got a spare one here. Um, a GPS module that, that works out what exactly what the timing is because the, the timing is quite crucial um, and then off it goes and it does its thing um, so that's what I'd like to build as well um, I've got a, two antennas up on the roof I've got an 80 meter antenna which I use for 8040 uh, and a, uh, a 20 meter antenna um, more often than not the 20 meter antenna is just sitting there doing nothing so the plan would be to have that sort of permanently plugged into the whisper transmitter and it's just doing its thing. Um, this particular module here, the GPS module, I got for off uh, a particular website, I, I won't use the name, but um, it was two dollars free shipping. It turned up here and as you can see um, I, I thought it was new but it, I don't know, it's probably new but it's been uh, poorly stored by the looks of it. It's got corrosion all over it. Um, interesting enough the down in this corner here was, uh, if I recall, it was a, um, a memory chip of some sort that was skewed off to one side. Uh, it had a bit of a hard life, so I removed that chip because I didn't need it. Um, it. Gave it a bit of a clean up and it actually burst into life. Um, they gave me my money back, which was nice, because uh, that clearly wasn't how it was displayed when it was um, sold. But I've got this sitting around, so yeah, the intent would be to, to resurrect that. Um, again, this particular project, I want it to be standalone. Um, again, nothing new here. There, there's many examples of these sorts of transmitters on the internet. Um, I don't tend to copy any of those. It'll be, um, again, as a learning experience to, to basically just put it together, find out what the whisper uh, protocols are in terms of the modulation, um, what the uh, the bits are, etc., etc., um, and then go from there. Probably just use an Arduino. It'd be nice and easy. Uh, some previous project, so I'll just reuse that one. Uh, I think, in terms of the VFO, again, out of the junk box is an old AD9850. Um, this particular one, for whatever reason, I can't quite recall now, has had the uh, the low pass filter removed, but that's fine because um, I'll have a, a homebrew filter after that. Um, I've got on order a, uh, as, as suggested in the previous video. A, an amplifier board, um, I think that was six dollars. Um, so uh, that's coming in the mail um, as a way of sort of just making this a little bit more sort of modular with uh, off-the-shelf cheap components um, from the internet. So uh, that'll be the plan there. Uh, I, I'm not quite sure what the output power I want it to be. Um, Part of me thinks uh, about a watt would be quite nice, but if it turns out to be a bit less than that, hey, whatever. Um, I'm just sort of just curious to uh, let this thing run while I'm in the shack, and then just sort of periodically check the whisper net uh, and see where it may or may not be being detected. Uh, in terms of the display, I'll just use a little, again, out of the junk box, um, little OLED display. And what I'm also thinking about is I don't use the word festooning, but um, having a whole series of uh, LEDs, either sort of discrete LEDs uh, like these, the old style ones, or the, um, the uh, I can never think of the name, the NeoPixel ones, I can never think of the name. I've got a, a few of these sort of spear. Because um, if, you, if you recall, some of those old computer systems, you know, the PDP-8 and, and the like, would have uh, the LEDs that were sitting on the various buses, um, and they would blink um, as as data was flowing through on the on the digital lines. So I'm thinking about something similar. Uh, so the four bits that make up the whisper um, frequency shift keying. So each time 
the frequency changes and it's and it's yeah the frequency changes for the frequency shift keying then I'd have an LED sort of um, on for that so that might quite make quite a nice sort of um, not sculpture but you know something sitting here on the back of the display back of the shack here just sort of blinking away as it's uh, as it's transmitting and maybe one for status you know it's on it's transmitting it's preparing to transmit maybe a bit of a status um, information on here in terms of what the time is, how many seconds before the next transmission and the like. So um, that's that's the two things I, I want to work on moving forward. Um, and then uh, I've got a good stack of ideas that have been come up over the previous videos which we'll start to look at um, at a later date. But for now those are the two projects I want to work on. Um, I'm just debating if I'm going to do those uh, one before the other. I'm quite happy to take um, suggestions there if there's a preference to work on say the Whisper before the SDR or vice versa or uh, work them on at the same time. Right, I think I've probably rambled on long enough so I'll say 73s and um, start noodling and doing some research on, on how to make this work. Okay, cheers all and um, thanks everybody for comments on that, I really do appreciate it.